From out of a fog of war comes Dead Bringer, a brutal, bone crunching badass rules like RPG that can fit into your back pocket. We do a walkthrough today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about running the ultimate game of D&D and other tabletop role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and get my t-shirt below. For a long time, viewers and patrons have asked for my own house rules, and I am presenting them to you today. It is called Deathbringer, and I'm going to be reviewing the version that is on Drive-Thru RPG. The concept for this stripped-down version of Deathbringer comes from Hanker and Fernail over at Runehammer, who did the layout for this trifold or diefold as we call it and you can open it up and it has all of the rules of the game and a character sheet on just six pages. So we're going to take a look at it today and help you decide if Deathbringer might be right for you. So what is Deathbringer? Well it's a stripped down grim dark version of the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game. It's not so much as a game as it is a kit. It's a toolbox of hacks and house rules used to create a faster paced grittier game. These rules can be used by themselves or as a patch for 5e or any OSR retro clone like Old School Essentials. You can think of Deathbringer as hamburger helper for your role playing game or the secret sauce on your RPG burger. So why is Deathbringer? I like the consistency of 5e, the concept that you roll a 20 sided die and you have to roll high and it's very streamlined and I love the monster manual. On the other hand, I like the lethality of old school role playing games. That's something that I feel is missing from 5e. So Deathbringer addresses both of those concerns. All right, so let's start with ability scores. You've got the six traditional ability scores, strength, intelligence, dexterity, etc. You also have hit points and armor class, although I rename it defense. We do away with derivative stats. So there's no three to 18, just the bonuses. You get eight build points to distribute between your six ability scores. At first level, you can have a max of plus six and stats max out at plus 10. So why 8? The standard array in 5e gives you a net plus 6, and I take the proficiency bonus of plus 2, and I just crush it right into the stats. When you level up in Deathbringer at every other level, levels 3, 5, 7, 9, you just add one to any ability score that you want. In Deathbringer, your ability score is your proficiency bonus, your skill level, and your natural ability in one. A plus one strength means you are proficient with all hand weapons. A plus one dexterity means you're proficient with all ranged weapons, acrobatics, climbing, stealth, etc. Plus one charisma means you are proficient in all social skills, resulting in a simple, uncluttered character sheet that is instantly understandable to veteran players and accessible to newer players. For hit points, we use pure hit dice. You roll on every single level. If you roll a 1, you have to keep it, and you don't add your constitution bonus. This is an idea I got from 5e Hardcore Mode, and it doesn't mean your constitution is valueless. It still gives you a bonus to save versus poison. You can carry more things, and you can heal more rapidly. You just don't add it to your hit points. This means every player character has about a third less hit points, and the monsters will have a third less hit points as well. So what do you do if you have a character with just one hit point? Point on first level, Deathbringer. You use an NPC, non-player cover, as a human shield until you get more hit points. But it gets tougher because characters die at negative hit points and there are no death saves and you start with little in the way of armor or weapons. A few characters will be lucky to claw their way past fifth level. Deathbringer is not Marvel superheroes fantasy. It's pulp fantasy in the vein of Robert Howard and Fritz Leiber. There are no elves, dwarfs, clerics, anthropomorphic species. Everyone is human and no one can see in the dark. Death saves on the training wheels of RPGs. But there is an element of heroism and Paul Verhoeven-like ultraviolence in the form of the Deathbringer dice, an idea similar to DM Scotty's luck dice. Characters begin each session with one Deathbringer die per level. It's a separate D6 you keep in a pool just to the side of your character sheet. The dice replace class features, skills, feats, and inspiration. A player can spend a Deathbringer die to add D6 to any D20 roll, inflict an additional D6 damage, or absorb D6 damage. And you can use multiple Deathbringer dice in the same attack for massive damage or to pull off incredible stunts. You ever want to smite like a paladin, but you can't because you're not a paladin? Ever have the opportunity to sneak up on a monster and backstab him like a rogue, but you're not a rogue? Rage like a barbarian, even though you're not a barbarian? Swing from a chandelier 
earlier and make an improvised weapon. Deathbringer dice make all of that possible. You don't need a feat called Tavern Brawler to turn a mutton leg into a shiv. I actually write that in the introduction. Every character has a right to kill someone with a leg of mutton. This creates a lot more options for player characters. It allows your players to break out of that fence that is the character sheet. There is no, well, I can't do that because I'm not this class. I don't have this class feature. You can do things based on the fiction, based on the situation that you are in. So if you have a chandelier to swing from, or you're fighting someone on the edge of a cliff, you can use Deathbringer dice to push them off. Ever play a battle where it's a stalemate, like the boss monster and the players, nobody can roll over an eight for some weird quirky reason? Deathbringer dice can overcome that stalemate and allow you to hit that monster. Or do you ever have this experience where you finally hit the high armor class monster only to roll minimum damage? Well, now you can use a pile of Deathbringer dice. If you have five of them, you could just chuck five of them and do 20 extra hit points of damage. To create a character, you roll a random background in misery. No 10 page backstories here. So if you roll a four and a seven, you're an executioner who fled a scandal. Maybe you chopped off the wrong person's head by mistake. Or you could be a soldier who was ruined by vice, or a mercenary who survived a massacre. Deathbringer dice allow you to pretty much play a classless game, but a lot of people like classes, so I do include five. Witch hunters can detect evil and cast protection from evil, and they can turn the undead, but they can't heal like clerics. Healing is done by the Plague Doctor, who can stitch wounds as well as make potions like Acid Splash and Sleep, and they're sort of like a combination between healer and mad scientist. Scoundrels or rogues, they get an advantage when they're doing things like picking locks or climbing walls. Deathbringers are fighters, they get to use Deathbringer dice to make extra attacks and become a whirlwind of death. The Grim Scribe is the Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard rolled into one. You start with your basic starting spells. There are no spell slots. You roll to cast. It's a 10, plus your intelligence bonus, and you need a 15 to save. If you roll a natural one, you roll on the critical miscast table, and you could get a result from everything from a spell fizzling out, or the spell could backfire, you could lose a level, you could age d20 years, accidentally summon a demon, or blow yourself up. You can use Deathbringer dice to lower that number, so you don't explode, but it still makes magic very unpredictable and dangerous, and wizards are something like a, a walking atomic bomb that could explode at any moment. Burn them! Burn them all! And you gain spells by finding them. You have to go out and explore ruins and dungeons and find spells in old dusty tomes and in scrolls. And to memorize it, you have to tattoo the spell on your body. This means you can cast any spell that you could find that's of appropriate level. So you're not limited to wizard spells. If your game master allows you to find a druid spell, you can tattoo that on your body and cast it any time you want. This allows players a much wider variety of spells, but at the same time, game masters, if you feel certain spells like Healing Spirit or Good Berry are overpowered, it's very simple. Don't allow the players to find them. The other balance to the Grim Scribe's power is magic is illegal and spellcasters are hunted down by witch hunters. So the more spells the wizard collects, the more recognizable they are to authorities. Combat is D6 group initiative rolled every round, and that makes things very unpredictable because, say, the player characters or the monsters might attack twice in a row. Alignment is replaced with corruption. Whenever a character does an evil deed, they gain one corruption point, and when they gain ten, they become a monster controlled by the DM as an NPC. Grim Scribes also gain one corruption whenever they roll a natural one while spellcasting. So there's a built-in race against time before your wizard is going to be tempted to the dark side. Wizards are like milk. It's only a matter of time before they go bad. Characters gain 1 to 4 XP per session and level up at 10. When you level up, you gain an additional hit die and a Deathbringer die. Once you reach 20 or more hit points, you roll all future hit dice with disadvantage. This results in an average of 30 hit points at 6th level, bringing Deathbringer characters in line with OSR Retro clones and Advanced D&D. Are you going to cry and say it's not fair? That you want to be a hero? Here's a tip. Real heroes don't whine or complain. There's also this cool list of random kill shots. When an opponent dies, the Game Master can use this chart to narrate the carnage. Deathbringer is compatible with 5e and any OSR retro clone like Old School Essentials. You can import any spells and monsters from these games without modification, and you don't need to change the stat blocks in published adventure modules. They will be deadlier, turning the Lost Mines of Fandelver into a survival horror slaughter fest, but that's the point. 
Bring it. The default also includes a miniature character sheet, but the package includes the larger character sheet as well. Deathbringer is available at drive through RPG and on my Patreon. Upper tier patrons get access to Deathbringer Deluxe, the extended version with additional critical miscast tables, mass combat rules, and 60 gory critical hit descriptions. Also available on drive through RPG is the Eldritch Hack, my rules like Cthulhu game, including the terrifying scenario Cloak House. Special thanks to Hanker and Fernail over at Runehammer for all the great work he did on Deathbringer. I hope you enjoy it and you can check out more Dungeon Craft content over here. May all your rolls be 20s. At last, a game worthy of the name Deathbringer. I personally guarantee it's better than Dallas, the role playing game. Yes, that really was a thing. Now get my game and my t shirt and watch more Dungeon Craft.